nouveau sur le stand de Devolver et là aujourd'hui on essaye Carrion de Phobia Games. Hi Christopher, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Excellent. So it's Christopher from Phobia Games and uh, he's going to present us uh, his uh, next game, Carrion. So in a, in a few words, uh, how is it working? Like uh, the gameplay, everything, universe? Uh, yes, yeah, so Carrion is what we call a reverse horror experience. You assume the role of this amorphous alien being of unknown origin that was captured by the scientists and experimented on in this secret facility. And your goal is to break out and basically fuck shit up because that's what monsters do. And yeah, we leave a lot uh, for the players to, to unravel or to even interpret themselves. So we want to keep the, for example, the origins of the monster uh, a mystery because it's, you know, very often when you have some cool uh, horror uh, monster or, or villain that, oh, he's so awesome, and then they do the prequel and they explain everything, yeah, the whole origin, true. and it's no longer cool anymore. It's, uh, oh, so he was abused in his childhood or he was bullied in school. Oh, yeah, who cares? Yeah, like Prometheus or something yeah, like yeah. this. Uh, we do, you don't need to explain everything. Yeah, exactly. Alien was much cooler when you didn't know shit about exactly. it. Exactly. Mystery and everything. Yeah. And um, how did you get the idea to create this game first? Like, uh, because it's quite uh, original and uh, atypical to have uh, a monster destroying everything like the thing. Like, how did you get the idea? Yeah, well, obviously, the thing was one of our inspirations. When it comes to actually reversing the, the roles of this reverse horror, uh, I think our main inspiration would be Alien vs Predator, the <laughs> games obviously, not the okay. movies, uh, because like the fact that you could play as the alien the, and the predator, especially the alien, uh, when the marines would be scared shitless of you and they were uh, trembling in front of you and could just bite their head off, it was very uh, awesome and something that hasn't really been explored since then, like the last AVP game was what, 2010 I think, mm -hmm. so almost a decade and uh, yeah, even when you had some games with you playing as the villain, like, I don't know, Hatred, you were still a regular dude. And if you had some games where you were some creature, then it was more like uh, a neutral or, or a good creature, like <laughs> nice, fluffy, uh, yeah, more like a pet than a uh, mm -hmm. badass monster. So this is what we wanted to, uh, to give players, like this power fantasy of being this this awesome badass monster from from an 80s horror movie basically okay and how how do you do like um, when you see the monster first like uh, it looks like an octopus like it's moving very fast and uh, when i when i saw this just in front of me right now i have the impression like uh, it will be easy like to to just uh, take down the enemies how is it working after like uh, uh, will there be more powerful like uh, weapons or things like this uh, yes uh, as, as you progress, uh, the humans start having different ways, different countermeasures against, against the monster. So they start wearing armor, uh, they use machine guns, flamethrowers, uh, even start using mechs and, and sentry drones, things like that. So eventually you are always you know, powerful because you are like a boss out of a regular game, mm -hmm. but they do have countermeasures and eventually it, you have to earn your your badassery, it's not like the game plays through itself, it's not a, a walking tentacle simulator. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks very bloody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, blood is cool, so... Yeah. Blood <laughs> is cool, yeah. Okay, so right now Benoit is uh, just... Uh, what, what are you doing, Benoit? Just uh, discovering the game, but... Ah, it's just entered a, an eye? A, or, um, or a, an anus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, what he just did uh, was he set up a hive. It's one of the goals of the game. Is you set up, set up this, this system of interconnected hives, which double as checkpoints, but they also uh, entangle the whole level with, with tentacles, which assist you in opening the exit doors. Yeah. So he did just that, and he exited the level. And okay. normally in the full game, now he'd go into the overworld which connects everything together more like a, a Zelda or even a Metroidvania game. Garen is basically a Metroidvania. Uh, here for the purpose of this demo to keep things more streamlined, uh, he got thrown straight to the next level uh, without the overall part. So it's more linear in this demo than normally the full game is. Okay, you can go everywhere you want. 
in the sense that you have uh, some... Uh, yeah, mostly uh, we do allow for, for backtracking and so you are mostly restricted by the skills you have. Like, like in uh, Metroidvania, like mm -hmm. once you unlock proper abilities, you are able to unlock new, new areas and shortcuts and, and so on. Yeah, and uh, you, um, what was your last game just before this one, like uh, before before Carillon? Uh, have you have you been working on another game? Yes, uh, with the same team, although as a different company, not as Phobia, uh, but under uh, Transhuman Design. You may know him, know uh, them from King Arthur's Gold or, or yeah. Soldat. So like a pretty famous uh, Polish indie dev. So we, uh, under Transhuman Design, we did Butcher. It was ah, us. I remember this okay. one. Like, yeah, you like blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah, so this is one of the first Metroidvania moments. Here we have this jar which is very similar to, to the one you escaped from at the beginning. Yeah, now we grabbed uh, the alien tissue that was there and that allows you to evolve. So now we have a new skill which, yeah. which uh, helps you solve the puzzle. So under the right bumper, now we have the, the cobweb. So if you push the right bumper. Right bumper? Oh, okay. Yeah. Just slightly lower and you'll hit the, the lever. Yeah, you can aim with the right stick. Ah, I can aim with the right stick. Where is it? Up the wall. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. like that. Yeah, and now with the skill you are able to unlock the, the area above that, that wasn't available to you. And obviously, as, as you progress, the, the whole setup will start getting more complex. Like this was just the introductory puzzle to the yeah. general concept of, of this Metroidvania-ish uh, progression. Yeah, it's a one-way pipe, so... And even if the game is not finished yet, uh, how much time will it take to finish the adventure? Uh, Any it, idea? It's hard to say exactly because we're still finishing the content. Uh, we want it to be anything between four and eight hours. We don't want it to be too long because mm -hmm. we want to keep the experience fresh and, and fun for, throughout the whole game. Uh, I think we'll arrive at something like six hours, give or take, but uh, well, it's hard to say at this point still before we have everything completed and see some people play through the whole game because you know how it is with metroidvanias depending on on how well you yeah. you explore you and explore traverse and yeah you can get stuck for hours somewhere because you know it's some metroidvania yeah, it can take some time <laughs> yeah and uh, do you have any uh, uh, difficulty levels in the game like to choose in the beginning uh, currently not we are exploring this this option although ideally i think we'll have it more like this universal uh, difficulty level. Like, it isn't a very skill-based game, unlike Butcher, which was all about, uh, you know, fast reaction times and Twitch uh, gameplay uh, experience. It is very old school uh, play style. This is more of a, an experience and exploration game, so we obviously don't want it to play itself and pose no challenge at all, but it's it, like the difficulty isn't the most like the selling point of this game. You can just grab it. With, what? You can just grab it. You don't have to shoot it. Okay. Like right stick and right trigger to pull. Right stick. Oh, okay. Yeah, like that. And about the sound, like uh, my friend has a headset, but I have seen the trailer and it's, um, and it's yelling all the time. Uh, how did you do to, to record it? Like? Yeah, we have uh, a sound engineer who, who records everything himself. So he invites all his, all his friends and, <laughs> and not only all some actors, but uh, like the, the first set of yells was just his friends from, you know, black and death metal uh, bands who, who do <laughs> vocals. So he asked them to yell and scream and recorded that and also all the all the foley work all the sounds in the game he also records everything himself like you know destroying all the cabbages watermelons whatever uh, for example the sound of the tentacles is him taking a usb cable and cutting through air <laughs> uh, so he's pretty creative with with that uh, so yeah all all the sounds we don't use any pre-recorded uh, sample audio banks or, or anything like that. It's all our own work. 
And when it comes to music, we have Chris Velasco on board. Okay. You may know him from some AAA games such as uh, Bloodborne, so, the earlier God of Wars, uh, okay. Resident Evil 7. Oh. Recently, he did Dark Side of 3. Like, yeah, he, he has quite quite a nice resume with with AAA uh, titles. Yeah, you can just grab it. Yeah, again. Uh, a new anus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just yank it when you're grabbing. Yeah. And uh, as a Polish studio, do you have any connection with, with others in uh, Poland? I mean, we know lots of lots of Polish devs. Like the whole Polish game dev community is is very well uh, like integrated. We have lots of lots of different conferences and and parties. Even yesterday there was a a Polish party uh, here at Gamescom. So. Yeah, most people know each other, or at least know of each other's existence. Although, well, obviously not everyone, because we have, uh, from what I feel like, 400 studios in Poland right now. But yeah, those who want to like get to know each other, we are pretty well. Okay. Uh, we are a pretty tight community. Okay. Okay. So thanks for this presentation, and uh, uh, when the game will be released? Uh, sometime next year. We, next year? Yeah. We don't have an exact announcement date, uh, an exact date announced just yet. Okay, thanks for everything.